Hey everyone, it's Emily with Hearty Soul. Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm making a butternut squash in my Instant Pot. We've got fall harvest going on right now. They are chopping corn and I've got to get a meal ready for about 10 to 12 guys tonight. I wanna make sure I get a head start because it gets kinda of crazy towards the end of the day and I wanna make sure that my squash is ready to go. So I cut up two squashes this morning. Generally just cutting off the tops and the bottoms of the squash and then cutting it up, quartering it, however it works. I like to keep them in these kind of rounded areas. It's a lot easier to get these out, the, the flesh out when they're done. And then I know the seed pouch is right in the bottom of this wider part of the squash, so I'm going to go in knife first. So I know it's just sitting in there right here. never done this before. It's kind of like cleaning out the inside guts of a pumpkin. We've got some stringy business going on in there and seeds. This is generally where I'll get my seeds for the next year's planting. We do a lot of seed saving around here so we'll generally rinse off these little squash seeds and let them dry out on a newspaper or a paper towel uh, for a few days before we put them into a brown, like a lunch sack. And that will keep them stored in a dry, cool place in our basement storage room for the next year's I found two cutting up a squash like this on a cutting board is okay, but the squash are very hard to cut through and also slippery. So I found cutting these guys up on, on a towel or something a little bit with a little bit more grip is kind of nice because you are working with a sharp scissors and a very thick piece of vegetable. I think that's pretty good for this one. But especially with our larger squash, I wanna make sure that all of the flesh inside of my squash, you can't see what I'm doing over here. I'm stabbing my squash. So while my squash is in its largest form, I am just going to what is called knife or fork my squash to allow all of the heat radiate through the squash so the whole thing gets cooked and not just the outside. Alright, so that's good there and then I'm just going to kind of put this up. So now we've got our squash in about a cup of water. Now, some people would salt and pepper this at this point, but we're gonna do that later on when it's more mashed up and when we're ready to really serve it. Oh my gosh, please, oh, you're so close. Let's do it. Oh, yes, thank you. Okay, so 
I'm just gonna set my Instant Pot on steam for 30 minutes. Make sure my vent is closed. to my chickens and give them a treat. While I'm out giving this treat to our chickens, I wanna catch you up real quick like. It's been a super crazy last couple of weeks as we're trying to get our black top pad in, all of our corn silage done and covered. And I thought I'd take you through just a little bit of a glimpse to see how all of this came together in a very short amount of time. This is going to be so nice to have this year's corn silage harvest put on our black top. It's just going to make such a big difference when it comes to feeding our cows and preparing the feed mix. I only have 30 minutes to show you how this process came to be, so hang on tight. We're going to speed this up. Some exciting stuff going on today. As you can see behind me, there's some ground leveling going on. And hungry sheep. Let's go check it out. So just to sort of give you the lay of the yard here, this is our house and our yard and the gardens. And then right across from it is our feed pad, which last fall you watched us cover this big corn silage pile right here. And all of this right here is going to be soon black top. This is gonna be very exciting. This is gonna be a large area of black top, which will be really great for what? Rollerblading. Rollerblading and bicycling, but even more than all of that, the real purpose of this is to put our feed onto a really nice clean surface so we're not having to pick up any rocks or dirt or other sediment underneath our feed when we're feeding our cows. So all of the feed will be now stacked on some really nice, pristine, flat black top.
gotten to see how crazy our last couple of weeks have been, let's get back to the squash and let's see how it turned out. So I'm gonna take them out now and place them in my pans and remove the skins. And then I'm gonna combine some ingredients to the squash to make it super, super tasty. One of the secret ingredients to the squash that we really like around here is adding a little bit of brown sugar, butter, and salt and pepper. So by getting this done ahead of time, that means I've got time to make my chicken spaghetti tonight, cook my buns, get all of the beverages and milk rounded up, and still have enough time to feed the four kids, pack everything up, and find all of the guys in the field. I'm gonna kind of let these cool. They are very hot. I'm just gonna scrape out the best I can here and add all of my squash to my kettle here. This butternut squash that we grew in our garden this year is by far the most popular squash at our farmer's market. I think it goes even beyond the popularity of the spaghetti squash, the acorn squash, the buttercup squash. I have grown all of the varieties of squash, and this one by far sells the best and is the most popular around here also. It just seems to be really nice and um, hearty, no pun intended, and just really rich in flavor. It's not watery or stringy. I might go out back out to the garden and grab a couple of more squash because I know it makes really good leftovers as well and everyone really enjoys it around here so I don't know if this is enough to feed both of our house and about 10 to 12 guys in the field so I might grab one more transfer all of this back to my pot and then steam cook a couple of more squash in here all of my squash cooked up in my instant pot. I've taken all of the skins off and of course all of the seeds are out of it and I've put it back in my instant pot and I've just used one of these potato mashers. Mash it up nice and smooth. Make sure there's not a ton of lumps. Just sort of like the consistency of mashed potatoes. I put my instant pot on saute just to sort of heat up the bottom a little bit. I'm gonna add one stick of butter. This is four squash, so it's a lot of squash and uh, so one stick of butter is gonna be good. Stick that in there. I'm gonna add a good amount of pepper. the bottom heating up means my butter should melt nice so the idea is just sort of heat this through once I get it all sort of all of these ingredients combined nicely then I'm just gonna select um, keep warm on my instant pot and just kind of keep it nice and warm and it'll kind of marinate in there a little bit all of the sugar and the butter and the salt and pepper will kind of combine and 
give us a nice space. I don't want to, I don't want it to burn to the bottom, so I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna turn this to keep warm right now, just because I feel like it's starting to burn to the bottom, and I don't want that. When we serve this, it'll go into a compartment of one of our compostable trays, and we'll put it into a little compartment, probably add a little bit of butter and salt and pepper right on top of each individual portion as well. And then, once it's about supper time, mom comes by and we package all of these meals up and get them ready to feed all of our crew out there working so hard to bring in our crop. It's like we're just as busy inside as things are outside, and luckily for us, we've got both my mom and I and all of the kids we all just sort of get together in order to make sure all of this gets done in a timely manner and everyone gets fed. Thanks so much for joining me today as I make butternut squash in my Instant Pot. It makes a really nice side dish. I'm also gonna be using it for a soup recipe that I have and just is a really nice taste of the season. Thanks so much for joining me. Have a great week.